I have never coached one. I'm busy with my acting. I'm busy with my wealth management. I'm busy with Eric. I'm like, I don't have time. I said, you can't coach part-time. That is a full-time commitment. I, I don't have time. And I see how hard those guys work. They work 12 hour days and all this. I'm not trying to do that. And she says, well, why not? You take this position after having various reinventions of Eddie George. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I wonder what attracted you to the position. I wonder why not pursue acting? You were on Broadway. Why not? And you did, you did the TV hosting thing. You were a host. Why not mm-hmm. continue in the private sector? Why this job and why an HBCU? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. Um, six months ago, Carrie, I was not thinking about coaching at all. It was not on my to-do list. It's not on my vision board. It's not it was like, hey, let me, you know, this is something I'm interested in doing. I'm foc- I was focused on my entertainment career, on um, my entrepreneurial career, and being an educator. And just raising my boys and having a family and playing golf every day. Um, how it all came to fruition was the, the president of the university, President Glenda Glover. And she has the AD on the phone, Mickey Allen. Mickey, Mickey Allen. And um, they were like, hey, we want to run this idea by you. And I'm like, okay, what's, what's going on? I'm thinking it's going to be okay. They want me to pay for a building or the right stroke a check on athletics or something like that. And they're like, well, we want to uh, see if you'd be interested in being the head coach of Tennessee State football. Mm. I'm like, what? You, you do understand, one, I've never been a coach. Two, that's not what I do now. I'm in television. I'm doing wealth management. I'm playing golf every day. This is, this ain't for me. And I pushed it away. Like, listen, thank you, but no thank you. I can help you find a candidate. I know plenty of qualified Black coaches that would love this opportunity because if I do it, I'm going to be fully immersed into this and I got too many other things going on. So I go home and it's kind of in my mind. I go home that night and I said, I talked to my wife. I said, Taj, listen to this ridiculous ass idea. S double U to the V. I cannot, I cannot because you you don't understand. (laughs) I, we'll get to that later because she gave me life on Saturday. And, I tell you, and then when she, when she did meth's part, I was like, go, go. I was like, ah, ah, ah. Okay. Yeah. I digress. Yeah, so yeah, Taj that's... says. <laughs> <laughs> I was with you on it. Taj yeah, it says, um, she says, um, she says, well, well, what's so ridiculous about it? I said, oh. well, sh- I have never coached one. I'm busy with my acting. I'm busy with my wealth management. I'm busy with Eric. I'm like, I don't have time. I said, you can't coach part-time. That is a full-time commitment. I I don't have time. And I see how hard those guys work. They work 12-hour days and all this. I'm not trying to do that. And she says, well, why not? You know, you would be an amazing coach. Mm -hmm. And I kind of gave some thought. And I began to think about, okay, if I was going to do it, how would I do it? What would it look like? Mm-hmm. I said, okay, first hire, I would get the chief of staff. I'll get the best chief of staff that, you know, understands HBCUs, no understands uh, where a program, how to build a program up. I, I would get a, a, um, a senior advisor. Um, I would get a strength coach. I, I want to, you know, be the type of team that's physical, that's mentally tough that's uh, the best conditioned team uh, on the field. What does that look like? So all these ideas are flowing and I'm thinking about fundraising and this and that. And then I look at the bones of Tennessee State University and they have the tradition, they have the facilities, the best uh, facilities of the, of, of the uh, OVC and HBCUs. Uh, Nashville is a great city to come to. It's a great selling point. I know the people here. I know all the culture. I, so it started to add up and I'm doing my pros and cons. And there was more pros to this than there was cons because coaching is, is, is a calling. It's not something that for me, it's not something that, Hey, I'm going to volunteer to do this. It is a true calling. So 
I sat back and I prayed on it and I meditated on it and it really did a, a deep dive into my spirit in terms of, is this something that God wants me to do? And the answer was yes. Because sometimes it'll take somebody for somebody else to see that coach in you that you don't see in yourself. And if I were on my deathbed, a hundred years from now, would I look back on this and regret like what could have been? So yeah, I'm gonna pull my, I'm gonna pull the trigger and I'm gonna go all in and I'm gonna do the best I, I can for these kids, period, for this program. I'm gonna pour my all into a building leaders, building men, you know, first and foremost, encouraging them to get a quality education, not just not just taking classes just to get by. We're gonna filter that out. You will not be on, at this program with that, but getting a quality education that's gonna build for a future and that's gonna generate generational wealth. So that's that's what kind of led me into this path. And I hope my hope, uh, especially as someone who is so very protective of the culture and the community, that they, that, and you mentioned this, I believe in an interview, you, we see what Dion is doing, right? We see what you now are doing. I believe there needs to be, and this is my personal opinion, just a movement of our black athletes and our black excellence to, to, to go back to HBCUs. Because if all the talent is there and the coaching is there, they ultimately will have to bring the, the money there. Yeah. <laughs> they would have to give yeah. everyone the TV contracts, the, yeah. the same facilities, the same um, the same respect platforms, that they give right. the platforms that they give the power fives. So so do you understand the significance of a Heisman award winning um, retired football jersey, Tennessee Titan legend, running back at Ohio State. I'm making up all these titles for you. Yeah, Do you understand you. the significance of you being at an HBCU and not dismissing it or not being an assistant head coach under someone who doesn't know as much football as you at a bigger school per se, in theory? Do you understand the significance of that? Um, I guess I understand it. Um, I've never highlighted that though. I never really thought of it. Hey, I'm at this HBCU and I'm not under someone else that doesn't know more than me. Um, I look at it as a great opportunity to bring the resources, to bring the attention, to bring the, uh, hopefully the money um, to this program where it's sustainable. I just want to, I want to leave this place better than when I got it. Right. You know, when I, when I hand the torch to somebody else, how many years down the line that is sustainable. It's a viable business model. It, um, it's, it's, it's running. I mean, cause this, this has the potential to be an exceptional program. And the, the vision for this program is to take it to the next level in terms of FBS and so forth and to compete with the upper echelon schools, um, not just ac athletically, but academically. Um, so all boats rise with this move. You know, the eyes of any institution is through the football team. You look at Ohio State, you look at Notre Dame, you look at Texas, you look at schools. all the Alabama, any school. Mm -hmm. And when you turn the TV on to watch those games, you'll see commercials come up. And they're not talking about Ohio State football or Texas football. They're talking about the business school. They're talking about agriculture. They're talking about all these other things of their institution that will impact enrollment. And for Tennessee State, they have great tradition in all of these areas. So my goal is to centralize their operations to uh, in a very safe and, and, and productive uh, and responsible way and to add my resources where there are deficiencies. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe, you know, with a winning product that all boats are going to rise with.